Hi everyone, my name is Matthew and I want to talk to you in this video about the Udemy completion rates. And this is a video which I was prompted into making based on a few sources that I'd read. The first source suggests that completion rates on Udemy are only 4%, it's really low. And then the do not start rates are 70%. That's probably an even more staggering figure that 70% of people who enroll into a course, so pay money for a course, don't even start it. Uh, it's, it's crazy. And Udemy have once reported that only 30% of the content on Udemy is actually consumed by students. Only 30%. A second source then suggests that the completion rates on Udemy are 10%, which is better. It's over double the completion rates. So two and a half times the completion rates of the first source, but it's still really low. And this source is from February, 2020. So a reasonably contemporary source. The third source is from 2013, so it's a little bit older, but it's still reasonable because the numbers are very similar to what we're seeing now. So they suggest that the completion rate is actually 7%. Um, so still hovering around the 5 to 10%, really quite low. So I thought I'd have a look at my courses and see whether this is actually true. Do my numbers stack up with these? The first chart shows the completion rates of my courses. So I've got an average of 7% completion rate which is kind of sort of smack bang in between all these three sources. My statics course is 7% as well. So that's got the largest number of enrollments. So it's, it makes sense that it falls in line with the average. Thermodynamics is 6%, so about there. But then what's a little bit strange is my prototyping course, which is my lowest rated course, has got a completion rate of 13%, which is a little bit strange. It might be because of the different style of content than there is in the statics and thermodynamics courses. Then we've got a bit of a step change with my Onshape course, which is a CAD course. It's a little bit longer at eight hours, whereas the others are about two hours long, but it's got only a 2% completion rate, quite a big difference and kind of falls out of line with the other sources. What you've got to take into consideration is that these courses from left to right are based on order of number of enrollments I have in the course. The prototyping and on-shape courses haven't got enough students to give a reasonable average, perhaps. The next chart that I've got is the don't start a course rates. So how many people who've enrolled in your courses never even start the course? So my average is 55% don't even start rate. We can have a look at the individual courses and you see Statics has 47% don't even start rate, so a little bit lower by a probably a significant margin. So 7% or 8% below is, is quite a big difference. But then the other three courses are, are really at that kind of level, maybe a few points behind, uh, higher than the average. So 56, 59 and 57%. They are kind of a step change above Statics. What really surprises me is that the prototyping and the on-shape courses, I think are a little bit more visually interesting than the statics course. They've got stock footage and nice images and I think a much nicer editing style. The audio is better as well, yet there's fewer people even starting them. I find it really strange. The only thing I can imagine here is to try and explain why the prototyping and on-shaping courses are higher than the others for uh, don't even start rate is that they've been marketed better if you like so the promo video and the preview videos you have for the course are perhaps more engaging and therefore a student goes yeah uh, this looks like something I'd want to do so uh, yeah I'll just I'll roll it looks pretty good and then they just never get around to starting it so some key things which I think I've tried to take away from from this analysis from what I've seen and based on the sources are that Potentially, so I can't conclusively say these things, but potentially longer courses will have a lower completion rate. And potentially, if you have more visually interesting content, it might actually mean that you've got higher do not start rates. That's just a hypothesis. I think the completion rates reported are reliable and accurate based on the completion rates that I've seen. I think the 13% and the 2% are slightly erroneous I think the that more numbers would be needed more enrollments would be needed to actually get a, a reasonable average I think the the numbers are probably too low to get a sensible average and finally I think the do not start rates of 70% quoted in the first source are perhaps a little bit outdated and I would say they're more in the region of 50 60% based on what I can see I hope that's provided some useful insight thank you very much see you in the next video